what does it mean to have God's commandments placed onto a new heart? As a critical component of the prophesied new covenant, Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27, it is indeed declared that God will write his instruction onto a new heart. Let me read to you very quickly Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. And from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take out of your flesh the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my ordinances. And be careful to observe my statutes. Okay, so critical part of the new covenant which frequently gets overlooked in a great deal of theological discussion because we are necessarily focusing on forgiveness of sins uh, and cleansing is that God's commandments will be written onto a new heart. But what does this mean? Well, God's spirit writes the instruction. Uh, human beings do not write the instruction. Human beings are not God's Holy Spirit. God's people, of course, in being repentant and in pleading for God's forgiveness, uh, recognize their humanity. They are fallen creatures. They have a sin nature. Uh, all of us, because of the uh, crimes committed by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, have a tendency to not do what is right. Uh, and so in recognizing our humanity, we recognize that we are meaningless without him. We can't do anything to save ourselves. We must have God. We must have the sacrifice of Yeshua on the tree. God's people recognize his mercy to them. And so what's a critical uh, aspect of being shown mercy? Likewise, showing mercy to others. Uh, some of the most, I think, terrifying parts of the Bible that I have ever read are the statements by Yeshua the Messiah when he talks about how if you do not forgive others for the sins committed against you, you yourself cannot be forgiven. Um, and so if you truly are filled up with the Holy Spirit, if you truly have been set free from the penalties and consequences of sin, then you should be a very forgiving person. You should be full of God's mercy and grace uh, because of what you've had to be cleared of in your own life. God's people should recognize the need to act and think like God. Uh, if God is providing his Holy Spirit to write his instruction uh, onto your heart and mind, then you should be thinking and acting more like God. And this uh, very much can involve, you know, studying Holy Scriptures, you know, study, studying the Bible, uh, on computing difficult concepts in Holy Scripture, but it also means demonstrating the grace, the mercy, the compassion, and the forbearance of God. How often do we just take for granted the fact that uh, you know, if we were God and we saw this thing called planet Earth, uh, we would have wiped out the human race a very long time ago. Uh, we wouldn't demonstrate the forbearance uh, and the patience that God does uh, to planet Earth. And most especially, uh, we should be, as redeemed people, in a continual process of submitting ourselves to God, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Are there areas of my life that I need to confess and repent of? You know, supernatural compulsion when it comes to obedience to God's Torah uh, very much involves the, uh, the motive center of, of who we are as people. It involves engaging with God's spirit, God writing his instruction on our hearts and making sure that we are implementing it properly, unlike some of the more common obligation models 
that we see out there in the messianic world of ideas at times which can very much facilitate not mercy, compassion, forbearance, the work of the Lord in our lives, but instead legalism, rigidity, and just uh, not understanding uh, at times the uh, situation in life that uh, all of us may find ourselves in.